Superfund is 1,200 sites in the land of this supposedly glorious <laughs> country that we've contaminated so bad that people, for the most part, probably shouldn't be living in proximity to them, but do. And, I mean, and most of them are not getting any attention. I mean, just absolutely not. Ignored. Absolutely not. And as I said, like a lot of these, a lot of these, you can trace back to corporations that are alive and well today, and they're not. They weren't under NLC. A lot of them aren't from national security, you know. In fact, the bulk of Superfund aren't from things where we made bombs. There was stuff where, like, they were making industrial solvents, you know. What's the name? Superfund? F U N. D. Fun. Fun. Because supposedly, super Superfund. Because supposedly they were going to Superfund, like they were just going to fund it. Oh, okay. Just to get them all cleaned up. We were going to clean it up. We were going to do right by this. We were going to be accountable and not. Let dirty industry kill our citizens, you know? <laughs> but no, we just let them sit there and slowly percolate into the groundwater of toxic soup. You know, and then the same thing with our landfills. I mean, it's another part of the picture we want to realize about what do these messages tell us. It's not just doom and gloom, it's also realizing that there's a cycle of how nature works. So we're taking contaminated stuff and we're sticking it in a pile somewhere, and then it's leaking into the ground. So most, a lot of our Superfund sites on the eastern seaboard are old landfills. The EPA says that there's no landfill liner in existence that's going to last more than two decades right now. Uh -huh. So they're saying our best designed liner isn't going to last longer than 20 years. So what that means is that all landfills we're making now in 20 years, super fun candidates. Uh -huh. So rather than, this, this gets back to a system design concept, which, is, which gets back to this precautionary principle and these intelligence filters and how are we making what we're making and why are we making stuff in the first place, that when we put it all together, it creates toxic soup. So there's a lot of things we want to pay attention to as far as how we make what we make, and where can we keep materials on site and as natural as possible. So that by separating things out and not putting them in one big pile, where you can't separate out the good from the bad and it all ends up in a toxic soup, this is what we call monstrous hybrid. Because a monstrous hybrid is when you take something that you could have put on the compost pile, and you take something that you could have turned back into another metal widget, and you mix them together, and you throw them in a landfill. Now I can't compost it, and I can't make another metal widget. So now I've got toxic soup because the metal widget stuff leaked into the compost and it all went into the ground. And that's the kind of stuff we're doing because we're so frivolous and energetically inefficient in this culture. We've just got all this incredible, wasteful fossil fuel energy that causes us to do things in a way that creates massive quantities of pollution and waste loads that, you know, if some folks have seen the story of stuff online, that they're estimating that 99% of what your average American buys they're throwing away within six months of having purchased it. That's because most of what people buy are disposable products. But still, pretty astounding figure. You know, 99% of what your average American buys, they're throwing out within six months. And this is partially because we're such a disposable consumer society. Like, people aren't buying houses every six months. But they definitely are buying all kinds of little material products and things that become obsolete. Oh, I need the latest iPod, not that iPod. And certainly, certainly just to touch on that, let's not have any illusions about computers being a clean product, because they're not. Uh, Silicon Valley in California, where the computer manufacturing industry started as one of the highest densities of Superfund sites anywhere in the United States. And they're all directly linked to computer manufacturing. So computers are a dirty industry. You can't even get into the discussion of the value of them in the classroom, in my opinion, until you get past the ecological debit that they inherently leave. In other words, if you want to have an e ethically meaningful discussion about the point of computers in classrooms, you have to first enter into that discussion the fact that they're inherently an ecological debt. So how can you say something is ethically or morally relevant when it's leaving toxic waste that's going to exert? And this is another important concept for us. Intergenerational tyranny. Intergenerational tyranny is the concept that what I do today may very well end up leaving something that is toxic and hazardous to future generations to figure out what to do with it. And so in effect, I'm exerting tyranny over future generations by living in a manner that ultimately creates all this stuff that's going to be hazardous waste that they have to handle in a vigilant way so it doesn't just percolate into the groundwater and get into what they drink, right? 